Good morning. Everybody got a book? A red book. 137. Yeah, okay. Is a red book? Send your feet right. If you're able.
scared. Got some anniversary.
To be honest, those days are drawing to a close, aren't they? The closer we get to the end of life, it seems like the more that we understand and value that life. And I say that to, to challenge us as a church that our life as Christians also will eventually draw to an end as a testimony here on earth. Now, we're going to live eternally with Christ, and we're going to read about that in just a moment. But the work that needs to be done, the relationship that we have as we live this life and as we go through this journey of life, we need to be getting closer and closer to Christ and drawing closer and closer to Him, understanding who He is and what it is He wants to do with us, and then exercising those, those things in our lives that, that brings God's pleasure with how we live. And as we get older, Brother Johnny, I found out that I can't do the things that I could have done when I was young. And I look back and I realize the number of times that God was trying to use me, that he wanted to use me, that he could have used me in my youth, unfortunately, because of my, my hardness of the heart or, or because of my rebellious attitude or maybe my callousness towards uh, Christianity, because of those things, I surrendered the opportunity to serve him many times when he was trying to use me. And so I say that to say this. As I get older, I want to be able to at least do the things today. I can't go back and change those things in the past, but I can learn from that. And I can grow closer to him and get closer to him and be able to do the things that he wants me to do as I continue through this journey of life. But one of the things that God has given me is hope. You know, we, we look around today and a lot of people feel hopeless. A lot of people feel like they're just dragging and they just can't seem to get ahead and they can't seem to accomplish the things that they want to accomplish. <coughs> and for many different reasons, that may be even you this morning. And I want you to know that in Christ, we have hope. That's what we want to talk about this morning. Look with me, if you will. 1 John chapter 3. We're going to begin reading with verse 1. Would you stand with me as we read? The Bible says, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. Brother Steve, would you lead us in prayer this morning? Father, we thank you this morning for reading the word. We thank you for your precious and active blessings now. We're going to ask you to know the Lord. Father, Father, our hearts are blind. We'll be your precious. Amen. You may be seated. Wouldn't it be great if, if we would have had a documentary following Jesus around and we could see a picture of what he looked like and, and we could see vividly the things that he did? Wouldn't it be great to have that kind of a documentary? The truth is, we really don't know what Jesus did look like. The truth of the matter is, we didn't have that advantage of having those cameras taking his photographs. We don't have those things before us to see what he looks like. And as we read this passage of Scripture, the, uh, even John says, you know, we don't know what he looks like right now, but we know this promise. Whatever it is, we will one day see what he looks like, and we will be just like him. Now, I want you to grab hold of that thought for a moment. Jesus says we will be just like him. And we're not talking just about the, the physical part of us, the body. We're talking about the pureness of our soul. You know, when, when we were all born, we were born unto sin. And, and we came into this world with a sinful attitude and a sinful nature. And it was because of Jesus coming into our hearts and forgiving us of our sins that we became a pure creature, a purified person before Christ. We can't get there without it. We can't do it on our own. I, I was changing my oil the other day, and, and Brother Johnny, I was sitting there, and I was taking the plug out, and lo and behold, I wasn't paying attention, and that oil just covered my pants and my shirt and everything else when that, when that oil shot out at me. And I sat there, and I, I looked at my, my clothes, and I said, there's no way I can get this stuff out. And so I ended up having to throw out this pair of pants and shirt and have to get rid of it. There was no way to clean it. And in all honesty, that's how we are when we're born. There's no way to clean ourselves up. There's
there's no way to be pure. There's no way to, to get rid of this sin nature in our hearts except for Jesus. Except for Jesus. When I went in and I tried to wash my hands and soap wouldn't do it, I ended up getting some of this stuff that uh, my, uh, my mom had sort of put together and, and put in this bowl and I had to another thing to say. Grab some of that, put it on. And would you believe all that oil came on? Hey, mamas are smart, aren't they, John? Mamas are smart. And, and I got all that oil off of me, and I looked at my hands, and I realized, you know, I, I, they could have been stained for a while, but, but now they're clean, and now they're pure. Do you know what I could have done? I could have gone back outside, gone right back underneath that car, and I could have got my hands dirty again. I could have done that. I was smart enough not to do that, but I could have done that. And in our Christian walk, what God wants from us is this. When he purifies your heart, when he comes in and removes the sin stain that's in your life, he wants you from that day forward to be the example. He wants to show you all and let the world see just what he can do through his power. He wants to show that he can make you clean inside and out. And as we share that testimony with lost people, it should give them that same hope that Jesus was talking about to us, that same hope of eternal life, that same hope of being clean and pure because Jesus has made us clean and pure. This morning, I want you to know that if you're here and you're lost, Jesus is waiting for you to make this great decision to simply surrender your heart to him, ask for forgiveness of sin, and be saved today. Do you know that same power that saved me way back when I was seven years old is the same power that can, that can save the 70-year-old person this morning? That same power that saved that seven-year-old can save that 70-year-old today. That same power that, that made this filthy preacher into something pure, something that literally could stand before God righteously, that same power is still in existence today, and it's there for you. If you're here this morning and you're lost, Jesus is saying, I can give you that power to cleanse you and make you whole this morning. If you'll simply humble yourself, turn to me, ask for forgiveness of sin, and repent. I will come into your life, I will forgive you, and I will save you. And I will give you this other assurance that when I return, you will be one of those that I will be taking with me to enter into my kingdom. That's the power of God this morning. And I pray if you're here and you're lost, that you exercise that power, that you allow God to come into your heart, that you allow God to cleanse your life through Jesus Christ, that this morning might be the day that you become that new creature, that, that clean, purified soul that, that Jesus wants to, to inhabit your heart and in your life. But this morning, if you're a Christian, I want you to know that just as I could have gotten back under that car, just as I could have got my hands dirty, sometimes we get our testimony dirty, don't we? Sometimes we, we don't play the part that we should be playing. Sometimes we don't do the things that we should do. And as a result, the world sees an ugly, ugly side of us that God has tried to eliminate from us, that God wants us to set aside and no longer go back to. But we show the wrong example sometimes as Christians. This morning, do you know what Jesus wants you to do? Exercise this hope. He says, you don't have to live like that. You don't have to stay in that condition. And here this morning, if you're here and you, and you know that there's things in your life that you need to clean up and get right with God, today's the day to come. And even through that, it exercises that, that forgiveness in your life, shows the world the power of his forgiving nature. And this morning, he wants to do that for you. I want to go back real quick this uh, example that I was using about my dad. My dad and I, we, we sort of hung out together this week. We sort of talked about some things this week. We had some fun together. We laughed some. But do you know what the greatest thing that I heard this week was? I heard somebody say, you look just like your now, there was a time that I didn't. There was a time I didn't want to look like my dad because dad didn't have no hair. I wanted to have hair. There's a time that I wanted to be my own self. I didn't want to look like my dad. Right? But today, I take very pride when somebody says, you look just like your dad. I love showing him off. I love walking up and saying, hey, this is my dad, and then introduce 
relationship to other people. I love showing him off. I love the relationship that we have. And do you know what Jesus wants to do today in your life? He wants to show you off. He wants you to look just like him. And we have the promise in Scripture that when we choose to be pure of heart, when we choose to put on that raiment that he places upon us, that raiment of righteousness, we too can look just like him. And today, the world needs to see Jesus more than they ever did before. Today, the world needs hope in Jesus more than they've ever did before. And today is the day that we as Christians must get on the knees and pray, God, may I be a shining example of who you are that the world might see you. I'm going to ask you to stand with your heads bowed and with your eyes closed and ask you to come back to the end. With your heads bowed and with your eyes closed, I want you just to take a moment and look deep between your own heart. I want you to ask this question. If I stood before God today, would God be pleased with me? If I stood before God today and He was to look at me and I've not made any changes to this point, if God was to look at me, would He be pleased with me? Would he say that I had been faithful to the cause? Would he say that I was a good example of who Jesus is in the world? Would he say he looked just like me? Or this morning, as you say in your heart, do we have to admit we don't look what we should look like? We aren't who we ought to be. We're not acting or behaving the way God would have us to act or behave. And if I had to stand before God this morning, He would be truly disappointed in me and I'd be disappointed in myself. You find yourself in that position this morning. What a great day it is for you because today is your day of hope. You see, today you can surrender your heart to Him. You can ask for forgiveness of sin and you can restore your relationship with Him. You can be what God wants you to be when, when you leave this earth and stand before Him. You can be what you ought to be. But it takes a humbleness of heart. It takes repentance of sin. The lost person I want you to know this morning is just for you. God's given you this opportunity to come, to be here at this place. And God's given you this opportunity to open your heart up to Him, to enter into your life and to save you today. It requires you to be humble. It requires you to come. And simply ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins and save you. Would you do that this morning? Father, I pray that you might have your way in this invitation. God, I pray that when we leave this building this morning, that every person in this room might be what they ought to be and might, might be pleasing in your sight. That every lost person might come to you and be saved. That every Christian might surrender their heart and, and turn to you, to work for you, to, to live for you, as you instruct us to do. Bless us this morning, for it's in your name we pray. Heads bowed and with eyes closed. As we still play, God's love to you. You come right now as you love us.
here this morning. Don't forget, this Wednesday night, we'll be here for Bible study. You come and be a part of that, and we'll have a great time uh, studying the Word of God together as we continue to study the book of Revelation. So, Ms. Jewel, do you have something to say? This may be your last official service. <laughs> 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 
normally appreciate it. She also shared that she was hoping to maybe record in the very near future. And I would hope that you would let us know when that comes up. She's been writing some songs that she's wanting to put those down and record that. And I know you'll want that part of that too. I want to ask uh, Brother Gary, what's he at here? Brother Gary, would you lead us in prayer this morning? And pray for Mr. Joel and I'll just take good care of her and give thanks for God allowing us to have her as long as we did. I, you may not realize this, she came temporary. She, she was just here temporary. And so, yeah, it was just supposed to be a building. And so, we <laughs> got somebody. Yeah. But God bless us with that. Brother Gary. Most God, Father, as I come before you this morning, thanking you for the many blessings you've already bestowed upon us. Lord, we come this morning praying for Miss Jewel, praying for the little director you meet her in, the diner and director, and sister and the director in her service. That she bless her and her family. That she keep her safe, Lord, and watch over her. That, Lord, she bless the children. We see and look for someone to tell them she has an hour. Someone, we know she has someone that is available and they can be here for her. Father, we ask that you bless each one of this way this morning. That you give each one the same son about their home. We ask that to be left sick and afflicted, Lord, that you could touch them in a mighty human hand. Restore them by seeing the plan this morning. Lord, we ask that you go with us and guide us and direct us and give us how many things we say. We say that I can request this pretty holy name. 